Hi, I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin, author of three books about succulents. So today we'll be talking about the genus Crassula, which are the jade plants, the shrub jades. The tendency to branch is what shrubs are all about. That defined most of the Crassulas I chose for this video. In my sequel on stacked Crassulas, you'll see those with leaves that hug ever-lengthening slender stems. It's hard to believe they're even in the same genus. The word crass in English means thick-headed and lacking in sophistication. Crassula refers to a thick plant. And perhaps it's appropriate that I'm holding one called ogre's ears because, you know, ogres are, what, kind of thick-headed, kind of crass. Anyway, if it helps you remember it, that's a good thing. <laughs> You're familiar with regular jade. It's, it's almost boring. It's so common, but it's common for a reason. California's maritime and southern climate. It's the same thing that they get back home in South Africa. But I am going to talk to you about some of the challenges of growing crassulas too, especially if you get any kind of frost, because that's one of the worst things that can happen to them. I'm going to show you where I grow these in my own garden in the foothills northeast of San Diego, which is not as easy a climate as you may think. And I'm going to introduce you to some cultivars fresh from the nursery that you may not know about. Now this is Ripple Jade. Whenever I look at this plant, I think about using it in undersea-themed succulent gardens. It's perfect for that. But I also think about when people visit my garden and we walk through the garden and I show them uh, plants that, you know, they're welcome to take cuttings from, and I show them this plant, and because they live in the area, they don't need or want a cutting. They already have it. And this plant's only been out for a few years. So it just goes to show plants are like fashion, and everybody wants the latest. This one is lime and, or lemon and lime. It's a variegate, variegated jays and other variegated succulents. In other words, they, they have stripes or other colors besides green. Oh. They have to be somewhat protected or they're going to scorch or freeze. But in order for them to give you their best color, like this Crassula campfire, they need a lot of sun. But I'll show you in my own garden where I put these plants because you really have to give it some thought. Crassula tetragona, one of my favorite of the jade type succulents. In fact, you could almost call it a stacked crassula. It looks like a miniature pine tree, so it's perfect in miniature gardens. And just a real champion in the garden. Uh, here we've got Crassula platophylla. It's an average plant and as pretty as it is in the nursery growing under ideal conditions, at home it's harder to do that. Okay, let's just, you know, admit it. Okay, well next what would you like to do? Go out into my garden and see where I grow crassulas in the ground? Or would you like to see me pot something up using these spiffy plants from the nursery? i tell you what, let's go outside first and then we'll come back in and I'm going to make two pots that are the same and that maybe will flank the entry to my house. Now's a good time to introduce you to those you'll see in my garden or in nurseries. I also have a gallery on my website that IDs them for you. The species name, Ovada, means egg-shaped and refers to its oval leaves. Worth looking for is Pink Beauty or Pink Joy, which has pink flowers instead of the usual creamy white. Man-made hybrids, crosses, cultivars, or oddities that someone discovered and propagated have an additional name in single quotes. Popular ones have a common name as well. For example, Crassula ovata Hummel sunset is called yellow or golden jade. You can see it's not getting quite enough sun here because it's starting to revert to green. We have them along this east facing wall right up against the house beneath an overhang where they're protected from frost and they get more shade and yet they get plenty of morning sun, which enables them to attain their full color. This is Crassula ovata golem, probably introduced around the time 
Tolkien's Lord of the Rings became popular. Like Gollum's toes, leaves are long and tubular with tips that look like suction cups. In low light, it'll be solid green. But mine gets enough sun to redden up a bit, which is typical of Crassulas. I suspect Crassula ovata hobbit came soon after Gollum. Why not? Another name from Tolkien. Leaves widen at their tips, are flatter and more oval than Gollum's, but like Gollum have pockets. There's even an intriguing cross of Hobbit and Gollum, which likely would have amazed Tolkien. According to Wholesale Nursery San Marcos Growers, which has a well-researched ad-free succulent site, many Crassula cultivars originated in the 1960s with Southern California Plantsman hybridizers Ed Hummel and Frank Crosby. At his nursery in Malibu, Crosby grew jades to be sold in the East Coast as houseplants. Shown here with Hummel's sunset is Crassula ovata Crosby's dwarf, a smaller version of ordinary jade. Ogre ears, by the way, is simply a supersized hobbit. There's also a golden yellow hobbit. Crassula ovata tricolor gets its third color, a rose pink along the leaf edges, under ideal growing conditions. Crassula arborescens is a round-leaved gray shrub that looks a lot like Crassula ovata, but is a different species. Arborescens means tree-like, which refers to its branching structure, not its height. In my garden, it starts readily from cuttings and then just sits there. This one is 20 years old. If you know how to speed it up, let me know. Crassula multicava, or fairy crassula, which has oval dark green leaves and delicate star-shaped flowers on long stems. It's also one of the few succulents that prefers shade, which is unusual, yet the plant is quite common. So I gave it its own video. This variegated golem is at Rojas Succulents in Fallbrook, California. Most other jades I show are from Oasis Nursery in Escondido and Altman Plants. Mountain Crest Gardens is a good mail order source. Find links in the video description and on my site. I like to take cuttings where they don't show. And you just basically look for that, um, that band and that's where new roots will form and cut below it. Now, that plant is gonna branch from the cut end, so no harm done. Cuttings from the garden. If you were here right now, I'd give them to you. This could be a challenging color to work with when you are making a succulent composition because you can't repeat the color in the plants. Succulents come in every color except cobalt and royal blue. But what you can do the color chartreuse. This is such a marvelous pairing with cobalt. It's just a bright green and it works really well with ripple jade for texture contrast or this intriguing one, but I'm kind of dying to try this out in the garden. Did you know that you can use drywall tape to cover the holes in the bottom of pots? I learned that from Jeff Moore. All right, let's see how fast I can do this. Let's see what's under the hood. Hey, that comes right up to the level I want of the pot. But I'm only gonna be using half of this, so I'm gonna crack it open, because I know that these are just a bunch of cuttings. So I'm gonna break this open. Oh, that's a tight one. This has been in that nursery pot for a while. You hear that, the crunching? That's little roots being pulled apart. All right, let's do that over there. Okay, and that over there. It's kind of like a bouquet. You can kind of shove everything toward the center and then it'll look more upright. Sometimes you want plants to lean their chins on the edge of the pot rim. Sometimes you just want a full look in the middle. Let's add some soil to that. How's that look? And since I'm going to be planting cuttings, 
I want the soil level nice and high because I need soil to hold them upright and to root into. And this is just regular potting soil, bagged cactus mix. But I don't care what brand. All right, these are the yellow jade cuttings that I just brought in from the garden. And they're going to go on the sunny side of the arrangement with the campfire crassula because these are plants that need more sun to get their color. And things look, will look better and less floppy when the plants get um, more settled in. Sounds like I'm making excuses for doing kind of a sloppy arrangement. I guess I am. Okay, that's good enough. Am I going to top dress this? No. It'll fill in and you won't even see the soil. Find additional information in the video description and on my website's Crassula page. I hope you found this video helpful and entertaining. My goal is to inspire you to enjoy using succulents in fun and creative ways in your own garden and outdoor living spaces. Please know I appreciate your comments and do subscribe and hit the like button. I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin. Thank you for joining me.